Welcome to Omashu. So naturally, we're going to open up an episode about Omashu and the Fire Nation. A bunch of rebels intend to kill Ozai, and Unova's assassination mission was doomed when you realize the servant girl defector is played by the same actress as Azula. So naturally, they get captured. Even Ozai calls them moronic, because on the off chance they were able to kill a powerful, firebending fire lord like him, the guards would just slaughter the rebels. As expected, Ozai burns them alive, and Azula watches. I do like the scene that follows the immolation of the rebels. Zhao is apparently a lot less important than his animated counterpart, but what is most important is the subtle acting between Ozai and Azula. That implies that Ozai is making an unsubtle comparison between Zuko and Azula, indirectly praising Azula, not Azula, Zuko. <sighs> Honestly, you'd think he'd praise Azula. But he's actually praising Zuko because he's managed to find the Avatar. Of course, he didn't capture the Avatar, but hey, Zuko did the impossible. We all know that Ozai is not the type of person to compliment anyone without any type of manipulations. It's a very clear ploy to motivate Azula by using this comparison. Both of Ozai's children are insecure, and like a terrible parent, he intends to prey on these insecurities to further his own plans. If this is Azula's arc for the series, I welcome this change. It makes her line at the end of a series where she says, you can't treat me like Zuko, sting a bit more when she actually says it. Meanwhile with Aang, he tries to advise Katara on waterbending and ask her to tap into her emotions. Yeah, tapping into her feelings is a bad means of advice because we get a nice flashback to the Sovereign Raiders. Yeah, the show says all the waterbenders that were captured were actually killed or just killed on spot. This means we are also treated to a nice shot of yon killing Kaya. What forces Aang to detour towards Omashu is that he spots someone on a glider, which only airbenders could do. Yes, this episode is Frankensteining, King of Omashu, and the Mechanist. Apparently Zhao is such a dunce in this series that Zuko's own crew and Zhao's own crew exchange rumors, and apparently Zhao failed his officer examination three times. Okay, that's funny. The gates of Omashu scenes play out differently. Much like Kyoshi Island, they don't like outsiders in Omashu, and they even catapult someone's cart into a ravine. There's a joke where Aang says, What makes you think we're outsiders? And Katara and Sokka just look down at their clothes. Okay, that's a Joke that can totally pass being in the original series. Okay, one smuggling mission later, we get our first appearance of the Cabbage Man. Aang then meets Teo, which I'm probably going to pronounce Teo because I also speak Spanish. Yeah, he learns that Teo... Okay, I've already done it. Teo is not an airbender. Of course, this meeting with Teo is cut short by the massive explosion that happens behind him. I've seen people criticize this in the trailers because there's a green glow. To that I say, reality is unrealistic. The green glow does happen when you're burning certain compounds. When I was promoting my university to high school students, we made multicolored fire by burning different salts. We also meet the mechanist, who is named Psy in this adaptation. Given what a Psy was used for, which was to hold ox carts together before becoming the weapons you expect, I think it's an appropriate name. Our first plot point is that the Fire Nation is apparently bombing random parts of the city like terrorists because that's what the Fire Nation does in order to soften up Omashu. You do get Aang's discomfort when Teo suggests Aang bombard the entire Fire Nation and, in his own words, rain down destruction. It at least helps establish that he has a massive amount of conflicted feelings about the whole killing thing. The Mechanist is responsible for maintaining Omashu, including the delivery system. I'm impressed that we finally get media where engineers not only are nutty inventors, but also maintainers, because most engineers I've ever had to deal with were basically maintaining the stuff they, they had already built for like 30 years. Okay, maintaining the stuff that people, other people had built for the, over the course of 30 years. Aang wants to solve these bombings. My earlier hunch about Ozai playing Azula and Zuko off each other was totally correct because she's training with the Yu Yan archers, which explains the archery in the trailers. Whoever's playing Mei does a really good job with the grumpy bear demeanor. Back in Omashu, we see that the Mechanist has been selling his inventions to the Fire Nation spy network in the city. This is a uh, plot point taken from the point of view of Katara and Jet. 
We then follow the Fire Nation spies. We run into Longshot, Smellerby, Pipsqueak, and Viduke. Oh, and I was happy to note that the green flame is actually a plot-relevant thing because the specific mineral salt that burns green is found within a mountain. Woohoo, I feel so represented. Okay, the reason why Jet's Freedom Fighters were operating out of Omashu is that Boomy grew senile and ineffective. The Fire Nation spies, collaborators, and corrupt officials were basically running the show now. It's under Jet that Katara finally harnesses her emotions and gets a hang of the water whip. We also get a bit more of Zuko's honor fix because he's not the type to deal with random bombings. Zuko's mind says that the Fire Nation is a culture of warriors, they do direct confrontations, not this nonsensical random bombing in the middle of the street bit. Azula, meanwhile, plays Zhao off of Zuko. We get a confrontation between Sokka, Katara, and Aang over who is behind the bombings. Aang found the blasting jelly and the ropes which pointed to Jet's freedom fighters. Katara believes it's the Mechanist who is selling stuff to the Fire Nation. Yet, yeah, it's Jet who intends to blow up the King of Omashu, the Mechanist, Teo, and several innocent bystanders. Okay, on one hand, the Mechanist is a legitimate target since, you know, selling weapons to the Fire Nation makes him a legitimate target. On the other... This is dumber than flooding the valley because the Freedom Fighters couldn't have actually gotten control of the valley. Okay, so the Freedom Fighters want to kill the King of Omashu and several officials. Everyone will be fighting to be a legitimate claim to the throne and try to claim the city while it's at war with the Fire Nation. If anything... This is going to empower the Fire Nation because they'll take advantage of the chaos and have their own puppet king who's trying to gain legitimacy on the throne. Think, Jet, think! Okay, so now we get our uh, scheduled fight scene because if Aang just merely got on his glider and flew to Boomy and made sure the bomb did not go off, everything would be too easy. I honestly like this fight scene between Zuko and Aang the best in this series, mainly because of a lack of bending. Zuko can't use fire too much because he doesn't want the wrath of the Earth Kingdom army. Nice way to save money on special effects while at least being interesting. Meanwhile, Aang can use his air bending, which he does. He actually even throws a basket over Zuko's head, which is something I can see him doing in the original series, and then trying to get behind him. Then this random Earth Kingdom lady just attacks Zuko for hitting Aang, which is hilarious. Aang accidentally reveals that he has Zuko's notebook, and Zuko starts blasting fire at him. You and I both know what gets torched and what gets said. To cover for Zuko, Iroh's the one who pretends to be a firebender burning down the market, which leads to Iroh getting captured. Oh, and Katara does prevent Boomy and the Mechanist's assassination. Aang gets captured by the f not the Fire Nation, the Earth Kingdom. And in terms of action, this is a step up from the first two episodes. In terms of pacing, this episode is not great. We're introduced to characters like the Mechanist and the implications of him being a Fire Nation spy and willing to sell out his own people. We get Jet and the Freedom Fighters and their brutal methods, which really aren't shown all that well. In fact, I think they're actually more sympathetic than the original series, because they're only shown hitting spies who are firebending at them. We're also told Boomy is a corrupt king and the city would be better without him, only to reveal that Jet was the bomber in the first place, which is a stupid ploy because it would actually make their position weaker and uh... Then we're introduced to Azula and her machinations and her trying to play the politics game and uh... I'm sitting here like, what the hell are you trying to do here? You have a bunch of reasonably good ideas that would stand well on their own, but you don't give them enough breathing room. I'm sure some of this will be addressed in the next episode, but addressing them and weaving them together are two different things. Not to mention, I'm not sure you can weave all them together, address all of them, and do them justice. But those are just my thoughts. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping my channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.